This is actually really exciting for me. I started my Power Apps journey just two years ago in August and uh, created, published my very first app on September 3rd of that year. So to have come this far where I'm an active member of the Power Platform community and helping people and publishing some blog articles and having an app that I can demonstrate is uh, really cool. That is and this really actually cool. solves I love hearing business. the stories like that. Um, this technology seems to really enable that. Um, you're not the first person who's told a story who's been on the call like that. I'm like, hey, I just got started with this and yeah. check out how far I got already. That's really great. Well, we also we enable set up a whole citizen development community in the last year around the Power Platform. Um, so we've really been working on that. But this particular app uh, was designed to solve oh, yeah. a business need. So this is this is what we have right now. We have this lovely list that is pages and pages long for all of our various offices. And while it's nice to look at this, you really can't compare anything. And this particular little filter is not really helpful. You can't compare anything. You can't see what day of the week it's on. Um, and our users want something better. So thanks to a recent video uh, put out by Shane Young about uh, creating a calendar, I have uh, resolved this for us. And this is, I'm going to show you this page first, um, simply because this is his calendar in his video is just a single month and, and you can go through it. So we have our holidays, we have our month, uh, and so we have our list, but we also have this little visual here. Um, gives us the highlighted day of the week. If we hover over it, it tells us what the holiday is, which is really nice. And we can go, let's find a country that we have that has uh, regions. So we get a couple of different things here. We can see no holidays in the system to bring this up. And the reason for that is because in Spain, there are two different calendars, one for Madrid and one for Barcelona. And because they're different, we do them separately, but we can view all of them together. And here we have individual holidays, but because we uh, have them in different locations, this isn't showing the holiday name anymore. It's showing us the location so that we get this uh, visual. Well, where is this holiday at? Is it in both places? Is it in Barcelona? Is it in Madrid? Um, and their shared holidays you can see here is in both Barcelona and Madrid, different color. Or we can choose to view them just by a single region. But our users wanted something more than this. This is really great. We can go back and forth. It changes the year if we go forward. So we don't have any holidays in here now for 2022 yet, but you can see that we're looking at 2022. And these dates will be correct and on the correct day of the week, regardless of how far we go, whether it's a leap year, whatever it is, this is going to work, which is fantastic. And I'm going to spare you explaining why it's going to work because Shane in his video, which I've linked to in resources, does a much better job of explaining it than I do. But again, our users want something different and better and more. So we have this. We've given them a full year view. It has the same features as the month view with the single uh, countries with single regions, countries with multiple regions or locations. Sorry, this is a little slow. You know, VPN isn't always the fastest thing here. And you can see the challenge. This is a, this is a long list of holidays, which is why the visual comes in so handy. We have Again, our tooltip, and this is the tooltip, by the way, pulling up this information. There's a link to the blog article I wrote about using a tooltip in this manner, where it's not uh, 
static typed in text. It's uh, looking some information up to provide you the information that you're seeing. And again, we can choose a single region here. And we're going to run into this. Uh, there we go. But I think for me, the part that I like the best that I had the most fun with was this compare feature. And again, I apologize for the slowness because in demonstrating this out to uh, a bunch of users, they came back with, well, we still need the ability to compare. I need to compare. I have teams in two locations and I need to know what days they're all in the office. So we gave them a compare. And this allows them to compare up to four different countries. And But we're back to lists again. Well, I suppose lists are good, but we can also compare by calendar. So they have the option. Let's see where we're at. We're in 2021. I think it's because the network's slow. We should be seeing some highlighted days here right now, and it hasn't uh, hasn't popped up. But as you can see, having the ability to view it this way or this way makes it extremely flexible. And it doesn't have to be holidays. You could do this for anything. You could do it for any kind of events uh, that you wanted to do. So it's a it's a really handy tool. What was the most challenging part of building this particular power app, Julie? Do you know, the, actually, the most challenging part came in, or one of the most challenging parts, um, was building, because each of these is an individual set of galleries. So there mm -hmm. are 24 galleries that compose this right here. Uh, I had to work that out, but there is a lot of calendar math involved in this. It's not just sequence. So there's a lot of date adding and date values that go into making this up. And that probably for me was the most challenging part of putting this together. But the features, the key features that are used in this are sequence, of course, and the gallery wrap count which is something I didn't know anything about. I had never paid attention to it. I didn't know what it did. So mm -hmm. the gallery wrap count is what allows you to put this on a single row. This right here, let's go here. It'll be a little easier to look at. This is a gallery right here. Just this row is a gallery with a single row with a wrap count. This down here is another gallery with another wrap count of seven that gives us these seven days here and and you match them up but the wrap count um, the date time math and the calendar function and the calendar function is another one i didn't know anything about um, the calendar function is what allows me to get this it uh, brings me the days of the week and then i can choose to use a text function to just get the first letter or if I use short, it would give me the short names, S-U-N, M-O-N, and so on. Um, but those are uh, the key things that I used and that I found so fun about this. Uh, for me, making Power Apps is all about making it work, getting a vision and making it work. And that's what excites me about it. And the neat thing is this is only has one external data source. That sure makes it simple. It does. I bet everybody at your company was really happy to go from the uh, first experience you showed us in the very first screenshot to this. Very well done. Well, we haven't rolled it out yet, but we're getting there. The people that we have uh, shopped it out to are excited. They're, they That's can't great. wait to see it in action. And I hope to have this put out as a sample uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. Hey, I've seen a few different... Power Julie, apps with uh, one calendar sample, but none of them that put 12 on a page like you've done. That's going to be really <laughs> cool. 
Julie, I have a question for you. On that last view where the, you have the different calendars, is that you actually doing that layout or is it uh, you using the responsive containers? Um, you know, I have not really gotten into responsive containers um, okay. at all. So I did that layout uh, based on what, what, I apologize, it's the, my network's really slow. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I did that layout based on what our need was because this is going to be surfaced out on a SharePoint page. And so, that, actually ans that actually answers Daniel Holliday's question. Is he, he I was then asking, that, do you then embed this into SharePoint? And the answer is obviously yes. Yes, it's in SharePoint. And the next, my next piece that I'm working on with this is to turn each of those calendars, uh, create a component out of those. Ah, of course. That makes sense. That way you could drop it into any app. Right. And then maybe responsive containers. I'm, I'm starting to learn a little bit about those uh, in Dataverse because if, if you do a screen that starts with data, it's got a responsive container built already the way the screen is built. It uses them. So I am learning a little bit, but I didn't know about it when I did this. Perfect. So I'll let you have your screen back. Thank you for letting me share. You're welcome. Amazing. Thank you for joining us. Love to hear those stories uh, like you told at the beginning of people who just got started with this tech and having a great time with it and sharing. It's really cool. Thank you.